Mr. Sergio Arzini, thank you for the honor of joining us uh, at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy in Berlin um, and for your keynote speech. I uh, would like to ask you four questions uh, in order to hear your thoughts and uh, opinions on some salient issues. First, um, I would like to ask you how would you define cultural diplomacy and uh, how has it influenced your work? The more I work, I've been working with in, um, for international organizations uh, for uh, more than 30 years. And the more I've been working in the international diplomatic context, uh, I realize that uh, the knowledge of language doesn't uh, tell you much. The knowledge of economics, of data, of statistics don't tell you much. And don't, don't enable you to understand much if you don't understand the culture behind people. Because uh, the way, uh, the same concept in a different culture is, uh, is different, uh, has a totally different meaning. This is why in my work, uh, you know, at the OECD, we, w uh, we don't uh, have the, the power of conditionality. We don't distribute money like uh, the IMF, World Bank, and, and they put conditionality. Our power is uh, the power of uh, uh, persuasion uh, and uh, the power of influence. But, and we influence with uh, evidence-based uh, uh, economic intelligence by uh, showing best practice and encouraging countries, people, to move towards the best practice. Uh, but any time there is uh, somebody that says, well, there is this, uh, the Dutch best practice, I take it and I move it to, to Bulgaria. I say, stop, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You have, uh, the Bulgarians cannot uh, just buy like a product uh, in, uh, on a shelf, uh, a recipe. And, uh, and move. you have to make a huge effort, a huge effort uh, to adapt, to customize uh, to this, uh, this um, uh, good practice to the local, cultural, institutional, social, historic, geographic uh, context. And this is um, and this is why culture is so much. For me, um, uh, cultural diplomacy is uh, at the very heart of what uh, uh, means uh, uh, diplo diplomacy today, these days, is uh, very much uh, uh, questioned because uh, uh, the day where uh, uh, head of state they can uh, talk on the phone, they, they, they can uh, fly in a few hours and, and meet. And, uh, it uh, has changed dramatically. It's not uh, the, 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 like the university I was talking about. It, uh, uh, but uh, but uh, the, the, the real uh, uh, sense of diplomacy is uh, as uh, cultural mediators cultural mediators uh, to introduce in economic relations, in international relations, uh, this, uh, the cultural dimension, because otherwise you make the disasters, disasters like Iraq, like Afghanistan, like uh, Vietnam. Well, all wars are lost, uh, by Somalia, you look at uh, the United States, uh, they have uh, made, uh, uh, they have lost war after war, Vietnam, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, and they have loved, uh, because they, they did not understand the local culture. <laughs> the local culture, the lack of knowledge of the local culture has led to major uh, dramatic loss of uh, human lives, 
and the money because uh, the United States are on the brink of bankruptcy because uh, they have no, no more money <laughs> because they wasted them for lack of knowing the culture that's uh, that's why can you give us a positive example of uh, cultural diplomacy <laughs> Um, it's uh, a good, it's, it's, it's often better uh, to learn from mistakes than from uh, uh, success. Uh, but certainly the European um, Union, the construction of the European Union has been an effort. This, uh, now there is, uh, in Europe, uh, there are a lot uh, of uh, anti-Europe uh, uh, movements. Uh, but, but, but there is uh, uh, bashing on Europe has become a, a sport. But, uh, but uh, uh, Europe uh, precisely won the Nobel Prize for Peace uh, two years ago uh, because uh, we don't realize uh, uh, now that uh, we are commemorating the First World War, we are not, uh, and the Second World War was the continuation of the First, uh, we do not uh, recognize the value of uh, building uh, uh, in uh, a, a common culture, because uh, and this is why the Greek are right, because uh, uh, Europe is not just uh, an issue of money. There is uh, the heart of uh, European uh, civilization lies in Greece, and you cannot. Uh, uh, make abstraction of that. This uh, we should be fully into equation, and that is, uh, I think, the construction, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the cultural dimension in the construction of Europe, is uh, is a good example of uh, cultural diplomacy. Thank you. Um, now to another topic. Uh, in your speech, you gave examples for entrepreneurs who started their business at, uh, in really young age before even receiving an education. How would you commend um, entrepreneurship throughout the years, and do you think it improved? And also, did the economic crisis actually um, uh, create uh, give an opportunity for entrepreneurs? You know, there is. Um uh, there are uh, some scholars uh, that uh, make the distinction between uh, entrepreneurship by necessity mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship by opportunity. Uh, the entrepreneurship by necessity is the one who doesn't know what to do uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, is uh, somehow obliged to to to, to become, uh, and the other one that is. Uh, uh, is driven by the explo exploitation of uh, an opportunity. I always uh, uh, found uh, this uh, distinction a bit uh, academic uh, and not uh, uh, really uh, pertinent because uh, for me the real, the fundamental motive of uh, engaging in entrepreneurship uh, is not risk taking, it's also another theory for risk taking. I think that uh, any entrepreneur uh, main obsession is risk avoiding, <laughs> avoid to go bankrupt. Yes. Uh, and um, I think for me, is uh, is more uh, uh, a motive of achieving, achieving something to give a sense uh, to your life by achieve something. Uh, and uh, and uh, and I define an entrepreneurial society as an achieving society. 
where uh, people uh, are, uh, uh, are um, mobilized to achieve in different fields, in different aspects, by different type of population. You can have uh, uh, women entrepreneurs, uh, young entrepreneurs, uh, senior entrepreneurs, uh, you can have a uh, social entrepreneurs, uh, you can have uh, uh, technical entrepreneurs, you can have all sorts of entrepreneurs, but this uh, 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 in encompassing, uh, there is, uh, I find that uh, there is uh, in uh, public policies uh, too much emphasis on uh, high-tech entrepreneurs. Everybody, well, the, 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 where is uh, the, for instance, uh, the Steve Jobs uh, of Europe? But we have it. We have it. For instance, the uh, Amancio, the, 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 the founder of, um, uh, of Zara in the most remote, uh, poorest uh, regions of Spain, came out uh, a flower, an enterprise, Zara, an enterprise uh, that is now one of the 10 richest men in, on the planet. Uh, in uh, in um, almost uh, the, the socialist country like uh, Sweden, uh, came out uh, IKEA, Kamprad, uh, but the Kamprad is 82 years old uh, in the cold uh, in Norway uh, a few months ago at the 8 o'clock in the morning where, uh, where gre was greeting uh, the first, uh, the first uh, client of a new uh, IKEA uh, shop. This is because his uh, the, 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 he's a multi-billionaire, his fortune is over 60 billion uh, euros. And, uh, but uh, the function uh, the, 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 he's driven by the achieving something, achieving uh, the, uh, the, to, 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 to spread uh, the, his uh, concept and, and to make uh, his, uh, his uh, product, his concept, um, uh, all over the world. So that is uh, not to accumulate uh, more money. Thank you. Well, uh, as an economist, what would you recommend to resolve the financial and economic crisis? Uh, I think that um, uh, the most pressing issue today is uh, the access to credit the credit crunch. Mm -hmm. I think that um, without money is uh, difficult to, to and uh, we, we have a, a, a mechanism that uh, the, the, the banking sector in Germany, in France, in Italy, over in UK, in Spain, everywhere the banking sector is uh, in Europe uh, is um, uh, uh, is uh, fragile. Is not uh, providing the the credit to the the new entrepreneurs, the small entrepreneurs, those that can. So we have to create. Uh, since uh, there is uh, a, a a market uh, failure. There is a need for public sector to intervene and create a mechanism to provide alternatives to uh, to to banking uh, for financing uh, new initiatives, new activities. Uh, I think that, uh, and uh, we have to. Uh, to to make uh, the the public sector much more uh, to react much faster. Mm -hmm. uh, public uh, in the Netherlands, um, it has been uh, calculated that um, the compliance cost for uh, uh, a small business is uh, up to 12 times bigger than for a large company. Mm -hmm. Compliance cost to the in Mexico, 35 times more. Than that. So there is uh, uh, this. Uh, there is uh, in Mexico. It takes uh, five years uh, to set up an hotel. It's uh, it's, uh, it's outrageous. This uh, the, uh, we need more simplification, cut red tape, 
and uh, uh, and speed up. Speed is uh, uh, the is uh, the key factor in the uh, knowledge basic one of the key factors in the knowledge based economy. The other key factor is the rapid obsolescence of knowledge. So. Uh, I, I mentioned Israel that uh, for me it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's the best uh, practice uh, in a number of issues. 20 years ago, Israel had no venture capital. With uh, a government initiative, they created uh, 10 venture capital uh, companies in a public-private partnership, uh, and out of that, uh, a $50 billion uh, dollars, uh, uh, industry has been uh, generated. Um, but in Israel, there is uh, the office of the chief scientist, uh, where there are real scientists and not political appointees. Uh, mm -hmm. And this, uh, and if you, Antonio, you present uh, half a page uh, idea that uh, the scientist. Uh, the office considered that is interesting. They give you $100,000 to transform half a page into a six or seven pages in six months. And they give you the money in two weeks. In two weeks, maximum, maximum two months. But in two weeks, if you try to do the same with the the uh, European uh, framework program uh, for research or the new uh, Horizon 2020 program, uh, all these uh, EU programs, uh, you're lost. The Europe for Innovation has been a disaster, a disaster, because they have given money to who? To the, the lame duck. To Nixdorf, all dead, this dinosaur, Nixdorf, Olivetti, JCL, Bull, all of this, to some extent, to Philips. <laughs> but but it's, it's, that's the, the, the point is that um, public money goes to keep alive dinosaurs, and there is no money for the new energy, new flowers to blossom. And uh, I think also we have to do uh, something, uh, to fix something on, uh, on skills. Uh, the real asset of every company is the people that work in the company. But the, the, the knowledge of uh, people uh, get obsolete quickly. If you don't up, uh, reskill, upskill, upgrade the skills all the time, the jobs that exist today risk to get uh, out of the market. So, and uh, you need a mechanism to, to do that in all companies. And this is why it's important in the local labor market to build a mechanism for enabling, because for small firms it's very, uh, very difficult to invest in the uh, up upskilling of their workforce. This is why it's, uh, it's important to create a mechanism that way. Because uh, today, for example, take France. France is throwing out of the windows every year 32 billion euros, 32 billion euros of uh, training that uh, trains to nothing. Mm -hmm. Because you go from a training course to another training course because you, the training that works is the training you do in the company, not uh, not in the, in uh, in the center for uh, for training. And works only for the company. Huh? And works only for the company. Yeah.
Good. Thank you. We have also a more personal question. We are, uh, the conference is also about tourism. And that's why we would like to know what's your favorite tourism um, destination, your vacation destination, and why is that? My favorite vacation destination. Uh, my. I would say Italy. Italy, not only because it's uh, my country, <laughs> um, but uh, probably also because because uh, you go also where uh, you have uh, um, friends. Uh, the, the human, mm -hmm. the human side, the human relation is uh, uh, very important. Um, uh, uh, in fact, um, uh, because uh, because of uh, all what uh, Italy is, it's, uh, it's uh, food, it's, uh, it's uh, sculpture, it's, uh, it's a lot of things. But uh, in fact, uh, I don't like uh, uh, so much going. I do not enjoy so much uh, going as a tourist. I l I prefer to go on a mission. Mm -hmm. to work because when you, you go on a mission in the first place everything is paid for <laughs> so that is uh, not uh, a negligible uh, advantage second when uh, i go in a place uh, on a mission uh, this is uh, the beauty of my job i get in touch with the ministers and uh, with the problems of the country of the, the city of the uh, and uh, uh, and and i leave uh, the country. I'm not just uh, sightseeing. I'm not just uh, going to a restaurant. I'm not just uh, uh, an observer. I'm uh, I'm enter into the 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 social, political, economic uh, um, uh, problems of the country. And this is uh, what I find uh, uh, fantastic. And this uh, and I find in any country in the world. Because uh, this uh, uh, where uh, because it's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. I learn and I like to learn. I feel uh, to be uh, always uh, a, a student. Every time I learn something, I learn because uh, if uh, I have to give uh, a talk like uh, today, I had uh, uh, to make the talk. I have to read certain things. I mm -hmm. discover new things, and uh, and that is uh, fantastic. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, thank you for your time. It was an honor and privilege to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you. Sonia.